So this week, your Uncle Spurt pulled on his nicest looking pants, the one with only a few beer and curry stains around the crotchal area, and buggered off to the big old IFA Expo in Berlin. And after a few of these mighty buggers right here, IFA most definitely stood for immensely f***ing annihilated. Not gonna lie, kiddies, your Uncle Spurt is hanging like a baboon's ball sack today. But anyway, besides the ill-advised but immensely enjoyable liver abuse, EFA 2023 was shockingly quiet this year because most manufacturers want to release all of their shiny new gizmos outside of the expo at their own private launch events so they're not competing with dozens of other manufacturers. So for instance, one of the biggest events this week, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V launch, wasn't even held at EFA. And some of the most interesting tech waggled about there, like this here on a Magic V2 foldable, had already actually launched before the Expo. But some interesting new tech did seep out of IFA 2023, like pus from a freshly popped pimple, including a bonkers concept purse phone from Honor and a TCL blower with a paper style screen. So here's a quick recap of the week's hot tech action. Jingle me. Techspert Weekly. Now, one of the most what the f did they put in my drink moments of the week came courtesy of Honor, who unveiled its latest concept smartphone, the Honor V Purse. This is a full-sized foldable phone with a similar design to Huawei's Mate XS foldables from back in the day, when that big screen actually wrapped around the entire outside bit of the phone rather than being tucked away inside. The idea here is that instead of tucking away the gorgeous looking Honor V Purse in a bag or a pocket or whatever, you just carry it like a more like a purse, complete with an optional strap if you fancy a bit of that. You can customise the design that shows on that massive screen when the Honor V purse is all folded up, changing it to match your mood or your outfit with a suitably jazzy selection created by some of those artist types. And quite a few of these are dynamic, so the patterns can ripple and morph based on anything from how you touch or move the V purse to the lighting in the room. You could even turn the thing into a mini aquarium with the wee virtual fishy swimming about the place. You can jab and pork just like you don't do with real fish. It's more fun and possibly less cruel than dripping an actual fish tank over your arm. But yeah, the Honor V purse looks pretty slick and I would like to see a comeback for that Huawei Mate XS style design. The only confusing aspect is it's called the purse but you can't actually put stuff in it. Of course, what I'd really like to see next is the Honor V Hip Flask, a foldable phone that twists up into a portable booze carrier. Except unlike the V purse, I actually want to be able to put stuff in it. And surely that has to be the next evolution of our humble smartphone. This week we also saw a concept phone from Rivals Techno. This time a rollable phone that can actually grow bigger as you fondle it. In its natural state, the Phantom Ultimate's flexible AMOLED screen stretches around the left edge giving you a mini skinny display around back which can be used for notifications and the like. Tap a button up top and the Phantom expands in your hand in a pleasingly filthy fashion, unfurling so the screen size is boosted from 6.5 inches to a whopping 7.1 inches in just a little over a second. This gives you a form factor better suited to multitasking and reading, and those desktops morph as the phone grows, making the most of the extra space. Despite sporting a complex slider crank mechanism, the Techno Phantom Ultimate isn't too girthy at just under 10mm. And another EFA 2023 launch was the TCL40 Next Paper Smartphone, a budget blower boasting a paper style display with a matte finish which doesn't reflect sunlight. Now confusingly this isn't an e-ink display which you would get on the likes of a Kindle or any of those Boogs tablets. Rather, it's a regular 6.78 inch LCD display with a fancy pants anti-glare slab of glass slapped on top. Now, apparently this multi-layer coating can not only kill reflections, it can also filter out all that pesky blue light, keep your peepers nice and happy. However, the TCL40 Next paper is powered by a MediaTek Helio G88 chipset, so don't expect to play Genshin Impact on the high graphic settings. In fact, you don't even get any 5G support, but TCL is releasing a 5G version of this phone later on with completely different specs. The TCL40 Next Paper's battery is a smidge over 5000 mAh, and you've got yourself a basic 50 meg rear camera plus a 32 meg selfie cam. So is the TCL40 Next Paper a work of genius, or is it nuttier than a squirrel's first dump of the day? Well, it'll be hitting Europe in the next month or so, and hopefully I'll bring you a tasty unboxing soon. And connected health expert Withens also had a bit of an EFA shindig, releasing two of these fancy new scan watches. 
The ScanWatch 2 adds in a few features like body temperature monitoring, female cycle shenanigans and the automatic tracking of up to 40 different activities. I mean, I can't even think of 40 different activities. Sleeping, drinking, watching TV, falling over. After that, I'm running pretty dry, to be honest. And there's also a fresh new ScanWatch Lite, which cuts down the features so it doesn't cane your wallet so hard. And as usual, these ScanWatches should last about a month between charges, beating the bollocks off of most other smartwatches. And that's one of the reasons I love the ScanWatches so much. They're a great little compromise between having a proper watch, which you don't have to charge every frickin' day. We've also got some of those smart features like the notification support, etc. And hopefully I'll have one of these fresh new shiny buggers strapped to my wrist in the next month or so for a full review. So that right there was some of the hot launch action that happened at IFA 2023. And I've also got you a full review of the Honor Magic V2 coming early next week if you're not completely sick of my face already. And now I guess it can't be delayed any longer. It's time for the part of the show that would even have Charlie Manson turning off in disgust. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> So let's start this week with Migi LUFC. You're right, Migi. Who says, I don't know why I enjoy your videos so much. Is there something wrong with me? I mean, do you want the honest answer? Nah, no, mate, you're solid. Definitely do not seek help. Keep on watching and preferably encourage your mates to do the same. Now, I've got to admit, I was kind of braced for some pretty venomous backlash from Apple fans after I failed to summon up any fake enthusiasm last week for the upcoming iPhones. But strangely, there's absolutely no comments here telling me to go fist myself into a coma. Although judging from the likes to dislikes ratio of last week's video, it appears that some Apple diehards did indeed watch and just chose the passive aggressive approach of smashing the thumbs down button rather than coming up with actual reasons why the iPhone isn't a bunch of overrated garbage. Uh, Tim Mighton says, I use an iPhone 13 Pro because it's just what I'm used to and it's what works for me. But I get where you're coming from about Apple's prices, about how cultish some of us act around it, and how sh** the dynamic island is. And similarly, Baz Glenn says, Someone telling the truth about the f***ing big useless black dot on the screen of the iPhone. I gotta say, I am yet to meet anyone who actually likes that obnoxious floater on the iPhone 14 Pros. Even some of the lifelong iPhone fans that I know, they struggle to come up with any kind of defense for it. The most positive thing they have to say usually is, oh, well, after a while, you don't really notice it. I guess exactly like how if you worked in a sewer every day, you'd eventually get desensitized to the stench of human shit. GSC says, phones are getting ridiculously expensive now, especially iPhones. I'm done with Apple and I've sold my 13 Pro in exchange for a Poco X5 Pro. It does everything I need and then some. Yeah, I mean, I guess obviously with a Poco smartphone, you won't get the same dedicated software support that you get with an iPhone. But if you have been using Apple blowers all your life, I think a lot of people don't realize you can get perfectly good blowers that are half the price that do, as you say, everything you need. And I'm certainly not talking about the ruddy iPhone SE. On the subject of good features uh, that people would like to see in the iPhone 15, Dennis Jones says it would be good to have a self-destruct button. Yeah, although then you are basically blowing up something that you've just spent probably over a grand on, so you're essentially just burning money. Extraordinary Pimp says they need 45 watt charging. That would be huge on par with Samsung. Yeah, I gotta say, after reviewing so many phones that have fast charge, going back to those sorts of slow charging speeds is just painful. That's the one thing I really dislike about Pixel phones. I really wish they bloody sorted out. Yeah, 45 watts really should be like the bare minimum these days. MP says, honestly, thank God the iPhone 15 is coming out. It means I can buy the 13 Pro at a lower price. And Ragnar says, it's kind of good that all iPhones never really innovate. You can literally buy a used iPhone 12 and pretend it's a 15 or whatever. No one can spot the difference. Yeah, come to think of it, this is probably why loads of characters in TV shows use iPhones, because then your show won't look horrifically outdated several years later. Now, Ragnar continues, hooray for a Nokia 7380. I had mine out today and people thought that I was talking into a vape or something. Which one was the Nokia 7380? I really can't remember that one. I'm going to have to give it a quick Googles. So he makes for enthralling content. Oh, sh yeah, I remember this one. It's uh, I used to have an MP3 player that looks basically identical to this. It has a 2 megapixel camera and up to 52 megabytes of built-in memory, non-expandable. Yeah, I think my MP3 player had 128 megs of memory, so you could actually store two full albums on it at any given moment. So your kids these days don't know their bones with their Spotify's, etc. Next up, hmm, that's their actual username. 
says their hardware and chipsets are fine, it's their absolute refusal to add quality of life basic functional features. Please someone at Apple, try an Android phone. Well going off the number of Android features that seem to somehow find their way into iOS, I'd say there's probably somebody at Apple using Android blowers who seems to leave a few years in between just so it doesn't look like complete plagiarism. Rooney says, I really hope they do the 15 Pro Ultra in a red. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, sadly, it looks like it's only the bog standard iPhone 15 and the 15 Plus that are going to come in those bright, bold colours. And you've got the more mature options for the Pro models. This is just according to the leaks again, of course, but it looks like your options are silver, black, grey, or the most thrilling option, dark blue. Boner time. Nanzian says, tried the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5S all those years back. These days I rock the Huawei's, great technology and they're a bit cheaper since the Google ban. Yeah, I mean, I'm so dependent on Google services that I really do struggle with the Huawei phone, unfortunately, because I absolutely love the tits off the hardware. That P60 Pro, oh, and that camera, honestly, I've ruined several perfectly good pairs of Y fronts just from the photos that that thing spaffs out. Cena says, I may wait for the iPhone SE fourth generation since it's going to have a special edition design which iPhones have never seen. I thought that they scrapped plans to do another iPhone SE. At least that's what the bloody internet promised me. Oh God, if I end up having to review another iPhone SE in my lifetime, I may well end up chugging a gallon of bleach. Michael Ball says, you really ought to compile your Apple roasts into a book and release it in time for the festive season. Cheap lazy cash-ins, I am 100% there. Anyway, that's enough Apple chat for now. I don't want the fanboys raging at me anymore. Alastor says, Can you please watch a romance drama anime called White Album 2 so I can see Setsuna and Kazusa adorn a future phone wallpaper? Unfortunately, I haven't actually renewed my Crunchyroll subscription because I tend to, these days, I've been so busy, I end up watching about two or three episodes a month, which doesn't turn out to be the best value for money. I take some guts though to name your anime White Album 2. How have they not absolutely been sued to buggery by the Beatles? Jesse Boy says year after year the Samsung FE is slowly turning into the Samsung FU. Uh, Mazix Conster, probably f***ed up the pronunciation of that so apologies, says hello tech experts, been running the Sony One Mark V for the past couple of months. Seems to run and do everything I need. Sony should push their phones out with a better marketing plan. Or indeed any marketing plan. When was the last time I saw a Sony advert for any of its phones? I think maybe 2016? Uh, Lemony Snickers says, any thoughts on the upcoming Ayaneo? Oh, here we go again. Ayaneo? Is it Ayaneo? Ayaneo? Be sure to rage about it in the comments down below. The upcoming Ayaneo Pocket S and the Ain Orden 2 handhelds. And yes, I believe that the Pocket S is on its way over to me right now, so hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll have a full review of that bad boy for you. And the huge childlike geek inside me, definitely very excited about testing out that new Snapdragon G3X chipset. As for early thoughts, well, I mean, you know, if you're really into your mobile games like Free Fire, Call of Duty, Genshin Impact, whatever else looks like, it could be a really good device. Personally, I wouldn't want to have a secondary device just for gaming, I would just use my regular Android phone. That's mostly because I just suck at games no matter what I'm playing on. But hey, the kids are back at school next week, so when I am playing a bit of Call of Duty Mobiles, testing out a phone, at least I won't be getting sniped in the f***ing face by some 12-year-old twat. I'm better make this the last comment because massively overrun, as usual. Hamilton & Co. Performance says, I'm still on the S22 Ultra and looking at upgrading into the S24 Ultra if all the hype comes to fruition. Yeah, I do actually need to do a video on all the S24 Ultra rumours, etc. So maybe next week. And speaking of next week, do you see the, the awesome little segue there? This is about next week. So next week, no steins or sausages for your uncle's spurt. Sadly, it'll be back to special brew and Ginster's pasties. And there's actually bugger all in the tech calendar for next week as well. It should be a fairly chilled one, hopefully, so we'll be able to catch up a bit. I'll hopefully get some hot phone action on the go for you, including the old Honor Magic V2s. Fingers crossed be getting a Sony Xperia 5 Mark V in as well, so lots of testing of that bad boy. In the meantime, it would be bloody lovely to hear your thoughts on all of the fresh new EFA tech. If there's anything you spotted that came out of it that I completely missed because I was basically just not doing my job and drinking excessive amounts of booze, then please do clue me in down below. We'll cover all that stuff next week. Thanks again for watching this shower. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't done it already. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Cheers everyone. Love you.